fourth axiom, existence of zero. This is easy. We just suggest a zero vector, like so, and that will do the job. So here we repeat zero n times. We repeat zero n times, and for such a vector, if I do a complete detailed computation, if I do a complete detailed computation, that's how it will look. And for numbers, again, for numbers, we know that uj plus, sorry, uj plus zero number, it's a uj. We know this for numbers. And because we know it for numbers, we can apply it n times for each component individually. And we can conclude that this is my original u vector. Again, it's, I'm paying so much attention to this because, because there are quite a few questions where, where you require to check the axioms and you have to put the, in, your, in your verification of these axioms, you have to make the right emphasis in your argument. It's not just enough to make like a right as much as you can, no. In your argument, you have to make the right emphasis. And so far, in my four axioms, the emphasis is made on the fact that every axiom is true because the same or similar property is true for the numbers alone. That's why I make so much emphasis here, 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 and now here. Any questions so far? Fifth one, it's the existence of the negative. Again, for the negative, we make a very explicit suggestion what the negative could be or will be. We just take the negative of each individual component, and now we verify that this choice of a negative really satisfies the requirement of the axiom of being negative. So we just take the sum of these two elements. We do a complete expansion. You see, again, I keep the details. I don't jump steps. I keep the details is a complete expansion. And we know that for numbers, these objects, they add up to zero. We know this for numbers that uj plus negative uj, it add up, uh, these, two, these two add up to the number zero. And that is true again for every j between one and n. And that's why we end up with a zero vector as suggested by the axiom number four. Or, oh, in fact, I also have to observe it, something which I didn't realize. That if you have a complex number, the negative will be again a complex number. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's in case of the examples A and B from above. And in case of C, if you have a real number, then the negative will also be a real number. Okay. We get into the to the to the main part of the actually my presentation because so far so far we had five axioms, all three examples from above. And when I say three examples, let me just scroll it down a little bit. I mean these three examples. Uh, I I no longer can keep it in front of your eyes, but I expect you to keep them in front of your eyes in your notes. These three examples, A, B, and C. So, so far, in these three examples, everything went very identical to each other. For all three examples, we had a set, uh, all, the axiom was satisfied, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now, for the sixth one, I think that's where we have some differences. The sixth one, if you remember, it says that if you scale a vector, you will have an element of, I mean, you, it's, the sixth one is the closedness under, being closed under scaling. And here we have a significant difference because, because in example A, your scalar comes from the complex numbers, your entries come from the complex numbers, and that's why when you scale, entry will be a complex number. That's how you argue the A example. In example B, your scalar this time comes from real numbers, and entries, they are still complex. So when you scale, you will have Complex number, so in B case, the sixth axiom is also satisfied. But what? But in case of example C, you have this setting. Entries from real numbers, and the scalar is a complex number. And this time, you know that no longer, 
you no longer have it. Because if you multiply a real number by a complex scalar, it's not, it is not necessarily real number as a result. So this time, this one is failed. So if you remember, we, we needed to show that the example here, let me scroll down. Any questions? It, it, is exactly the, it, it is exactly the reason that the sixth axiom failed. It is exactly the reason why this one is not a vector space. For the person who is <coughs> for the person who is experienced with this business, thank you guys. Uh, for the person who is experienced with this business, uh, if you spend some time with this, you will real. I mean, you will probably, if you see a question like this, if you see an example like C you will jump to the six axiom straight away. I mean, you will jump to that axiom, you will show that that fail, that that, 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 that that fails, and that will be enough to conclude that this is not a vector space. Because when you conclude that something is not a vector space, it's sufficient to fail at least one axiom. If you And if you know which one to fail, you don't have to check anything else. Because it's the first time we do this, that's why I go step by step through every axiom. But, like I said, if you are in a time-stress environment, if you are in a time-stress environment, like exam or test, and you need, you need to fail that something is not a vector space, and that's a very high probability that you will have something like this. It's because, because it's exactly tests your experience and your intuition which axiom to fails. People who have it will solve it like that in 30 seconds. People who don't have this experience will spend lots of time on it. So it's a very good question to differentiate differ differentiate between who, those of you who follow the topic and read the book and do the examples and who don't, easy. If you experience with the part C, you will go straight to the axiom 6. You will go straight to the axiom 6. For the other two, obviously, we have to check the rest of it. Let's just see if you need to do that. Thank you, guys. We're almost, we're almost there. Actually, I'm not going to finish the actual Axiom presentation because I think I gave you enough ideas how to do that. So, uh, plus, we reached the stage where we saw this difference between the A, B, and C. For the, for the, for the remaining f four Axioms, I'm not going to do it now. Obviously, I will, I will upload. If you follow my uploads, you will find the notes on the website. Uh, basically, the, idea, the argument which, is, which you need to present there, it, uh, it follows identical ideas, the same ideas as for the axioms 1 to up to 5. Uh, any questions, please?